Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 2 of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning 2020 course. So this lecture is introduction to machine learning. Okay, so let's start. Why are you here? What is machine learning? Why are you taking this course? What topics would you like to see covered? Okay, so machine learning is... Machine learning, a branch of artificial intelligence, concerns the construction and study of systems that can learn from data. So it's a branch of artificial intelligence and it is based of data. From data it learns. Machine learning is Machine learning is programming computers to optimize a performance criterion using example data or past experience. Ethim Alpaden. So it is learning from data or past experience. The goal of machine learning is to develop methods that can automatically detect patterns in data and then to use the uncovered patterns to predict future data or other outcomes of interest. Kevin P. Murphy And The field of pattern recognition is concerned with the automatic discovery of regularities in data through the use of computer algorithms and with the use of these regularities to take actions. So that are Christopher M. Bishop there are three different or similar definitions of machine learning. You will get the idea as we see it. So machine learning is... Machine learning is about predicting the future based on the past. HAL DOM 3 I think this is the best definition because we train a model and based on that model we predict the future. What does it the future? The future is the ones that the machine didn't see before. Okay. Machine learning is predict the future. Okay, so there is past. And as a past, there is training data. The machine learning algorithm learns. It generates a model predictor. And future is testing data, a data that the uh, machine didn't see before. And model predictor predicts. Machine learning is known as aka. Data mining. Machine learning applied to databases, i.e. collections of data. Okay. Inference and or estimation in statistics. Pattern recognition in engineering. Signal processing in electrical engineering. Okay, induction and optimization. You see, it means different uh, tasks for different types of areas. Okay. Goals of the course. Learn about. So, the different machine learning problems. Common techniques, tools used, which are theoretical understanding and practical implementation, proper experimentation and evaluation. Proper experimentation and evaluation. Dealing with large or huge datasets. Parallelization of frameworks, programming tools. Parallelization is extremely important. So, be able to laugh at these signs or at least know why you, one might. And what are these signs? If we check carefully, biases against discrimination. Okay, there's a Bayesian theorem. Support vector machines. This is one of the most advanced uh, algorithms of machine learning. And duality gap, duality gap, uh, repel power loves, free variables. One genetic algorithms, and I can't read this one. All right. So, machine learning problems. 
What high level machine learning problems have you seen or heard before? For example, we have data and our data is these images. Okay. A red apple, a green apple, uh, a yellow uh, banana and a green banana. Or we have IMDB uh, movies as data. Or we have uh, these Xboxes as data. And we have different types of devices as data. So with supervised learning, we provide labels of this data to the uh, machine learning algorithm. And based on this data, the algorithm generates a model, learns a model. So when we provide a data that it didn't learn, it didn't see before, it predicts its label. It classifies that data into the one of the uh, classes it learned previously. So these are labeled examples. Label 1, label 3, label 4, label 5. And supervised learning given labeled examples. Okay. So based on this data, our algorithm learns a model can be called as predictor as well. And when a new data arrives, for example, this is a new data, we want our model predictor to put this new data into one of the classes it knows. All right. So this is supervised learning classification. There are finite numbers of finite set of labels in this case, apple, apple, yes, and banana, banana. So, our uh, classifier the, uh, learns a model that it can predict new data into the apples or bananas. Okay. And this is supervised learning given labeled example. So, let's start with the classification example. Differentiate between low risk and high risk customers from their income and savings. So, our uh, purpose is differentiating uh, customers between low and high risk. So, this, is this a model currently? Yes, based on the uh, position of the uh, Customer, we can separate them as low risk or high risk. Okay. This is the classification of high risk and low risk. And uh, this was just an example, and there are more uh, classification applications. And face recognition, character recognition, spam detection, medical diagnosis from symptoms to illnesses, biometrics. Recognition, authentication using physical and or behavioral characteristics, face, iris, signature, etc. So based on this, it can compose a biometric and uh, detect a person identity. Okay, supervised learning regression. This one was classification. So there are uh, classes and we predict the output as one of the classes and this one is regression regression is for continuous data for example uh, it is uh, regression is real valued as you can see these are all, all real values not just like data and regression ex example price of a used car you know price of a used car uh, is something real valued data it is continuous and based on car attributes uh, e.g. mileage how many kilometers it is and the uh, sell price of that uh, car we can learn a model model or we construct a model that would provide us its used car price based on these two inputs 
So we provide its uh, how many kilometers it is, and it is a brand new model price, and it will provide us a, an estimate a price of the used car. Okay. This is a very simple example, and we can read about regression on uh, stock exchange. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, let's read a bit. Why not approach classification through regression? Some material I've seen on machine learning said that it's a bad idea to approach a classification problem through regression. But I think it's always possible to do a continuous regression to fit the data and truncate the continuous prediction to yield discrete classifications. So why is it a bad idea? Okay. Approach classification problem through regression, by regression, I will assume you mean linear regression, and I will compare this approach to the classification approach of fitting a logistic regression model. Before we do this, it is important to clarify the distinction between regression and classification models. Regression models predict a continuous variable, such as rainfall amount or sunlight intensity. They can also predict probabilities, such as the probability that an image contains a cat. A probability predicting regression model can be used as part of a classifier by imposing a decision rule, for example, if the probability is 50% or more, decide it's a cat. Logistic regression predicts probabilities, and is therefore a regression algorithm. However, it is commonly described as a classification method in the machine learning literature, because it can be, and is often, used to make classifiers. There are also, true, classification algorithms, such as SVM, which only predict an outcome and do not provide a probability. We won't discuss this kind of algorithm here. Linear versus logistic regression on classification problems. As Andrew Ng explains it, with linear regression you fit a polynomial through the data, say, like on the example below we're fitting a straight line through tumor size, tumor type, sample set. And click it. There is a course of machine learning at the Stanford University, so you may also check it out. Uh, he is a lead professor, I guess. Okay. Above, malignant tumors get 11 and non-malignant ones get 00, and the green line is our hypothesis H x H x. To make predictions we may say that for any given tumor size x x, if H x H x gets bigger than 0 0.5 0 0.5 we predict malignant tumor, otherwise we predict benign. Looks like this way we could correctly predict every single training set sample, but now let's change the task a bit. Intuitively it's clear that all tumors larger certain threshold are malignant. So let's add another sample with a huge tumor size, and run linear regression again. Now our h x greater than 0 0.5 right pointing arrow malignant x greater than 0 0.5 right pointing arrow malignant doesn't work anymore. 
To keep making correct predictions we need to change it to h x greater than 0.2 h x greater than 0.2 or something, but that not how the algorithm should work. We cannot change the hypothesis each time a new sample arrives. Instead, we should learn it off the training set data, and then, using the hypothesis we've learned, make correct predictions for the data we haven't seen before. Hope this explains why linear regression is not the best fit for classification problems. Also, you might want to watch V. Logistic Regression. Classification video on ml-class.org which explains the idea in more detail. And when we open it, it opens the same page. Probability Islogic asked what a good classifier would do. In this particular example you would probably use logistic regression which might learn a hypothesis like this, I'm just making this up. Note that both linear regression and logistic regression give you a straight line, or a higher order polynomial, but those lines have different meaning. HX HX for linear regression interpolates, or extrapolates, the output and predicts the value for XX we haven't seen. It's simply like plugging a new XX and getting a raw number, and is more suitable for tasks like predicting, say car price based on, car size, car age, etc. HX HX for logistic regression tells you the probability that XX belongs to the positive class. This is why it is called a regression algorithm, it estimates a continuous quantity, the probability. However, if you set a threshold on the probability, such as h x greater than 0.5 h x greater than 0.5, you obtain a classifier, and in many cases this is what is done with the output from a logistic regression model. This is equivalent to putting a line on the plot, all points sitting above the classifier line belong to one class while the points below belong to the other class. Okay, so you can look for uh, more information about this font. And regression applications. So. Economics, finance, predict the value of a stock. Epidemiology. Car, plane, navigation, angle of the steering wheel, acceleration. Uh, temporal trends weather over time so another uh, approach of supervised learning is ranking ranking label is a ranking at this case and a ranking example given a query and a set of web pages rank them according to relevance so when we type machine learning Google brings us these ones according to its internal algorithms and many other factors such as your uh, IP location, your history if available, your browser, your uh, uh, your browser, your computer, operation system, etc. Okay, ranking applications. User preference, e.g. Netflix, my list, movie queue ranking. iTunes, flight search, search in general, free ranking and best output list and so on. So, uh, supervised learning, supervised classification is extremely strong if you have sufficient amount of labeled data. Since supervised learning requires 
labeled data, it is extremely expensive to do with large amount of data because uh, collecting data is a tedious task. It requires human human uh, labor labor. So it is very accurate, very strong, but it is expensive. And then we have unsupervised learning. In this case, we just throw mass amount of data. Uh, we select the algorithm, we make the tunings, and it learns from that data. However, the accuracy and the success of unsupervised learning is lower than supervised learning because you don't have labeled data and it is much harder to correctly construct a model over unsuper uh, uh, unlabeled data. Unsupervised learning, given data, i.e. examples, but no labels. Unsupervised learning applications. Learn clusters, groups without any label. Customer segmentation, i.e. grouping. So you, so you see, we are always composing some clusters or groups or some other tasks such as image, image compression or learn motifs. This is also uh, something like grouping or, uh, or clustering. Bioinformatics, learn motifs. And there is also one other uh, learning type which is reinforcement learning. This is also very popular uh, nowadays because, for example, uh, when uh, artificial intelligence learns how to play Dota game, it uses reinforcement learning. So it play uh, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of games against itself and from the feedback of previous matches, it improves its uh, future matches. So it is it learns with uh, uh, back propagation input. Okay. So left, right, straight, left, 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 straight, good. Left, straight, straight, left, right, straight, straight, bad. So it pro it uh, predicts a, an outcome outcome based on the actions it takes. Given a sequence of examples, states and a reward after completing that sequence, learn to predict the action to take in for an individual example, state. For example, the common game. Reinforcement learning is extremely useful in uh, learning games because you can uh, simultaneously play uh, lots of games and improve your uh, model each time in each game given sequences of moves and whether or not the player won at the end learn to make good moves reinforcement learning example uh, and helicopter A helicopter is autonomously uh, flying and it learns many of the moves completely autonomously. You see, everything style turn, speed, man man move, and such things. All right. Other learning variations. What data is available? Supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning, semi-supervised, active learning. Semis with semi-supervised, you provide half the 
uh, data with labels and half the data like uh, no labels or the ratio may change active learning and how are we getting the data online versus versus, versus offline type of model generative discrimin discriminative parametric versus non-parametric and touch okay we continue with uh, lecture 2 part 2 decision trees let's open it so representing examples this is the hardest part of artificial intelligence or machine learning because as humans we have a very advanced visual understanding however we have to represent these objects to the computer in a way that it can process that or make predictions of that data or use that utilize that data so this is the hardest part of uh, artificial intelligence in general what is an example how is it represented okay we represent examples as features so we split them into the equal number of features F1, F2, F3, Fn. How are algorithms actually view the data? Features are the questions we can ask about the examples. Okay. So, uh, these are the features of each example. Red, round, leaf, three ounces. Green, round, no leaf, four ounces. Yellow, curved, no leaf, four ounces. Green, curved, no leaf, five ounces. So, each one of these is actually a Feature. First one is obviously color, color of the object. Second one is shape, shape of the object. Third one is having leaf or no leaf. Okay. And the fourth one is for the fourth feature is the weight of the object. So you see, we have defined four different features and provided the algorithm uh, the data of each feature of each object so based on these features our classifier learns a model During learning, training, induction, learn a model of what distinguishes apples and bananas based on the features. Red, round, no leaf, four ounces, model, classifier. Predicts. Apple or banana. The model can then classify a new example based on the features. Red round no leaf for us. So you see there is no object here as that. However, it is red round no leaf and for us. So obviously it is an apple. You see, and it is why, why it is an apple, this is important, because in machine learning, our aim is to construct a model as much as general. So, 
when constructing the model, it should take into the consideration the most uh, defining features uh, of that uh, object type. In in this case, in apples versus bananas, what is the most defining feature here? Can it be leaf? No, because both can have both can be no leaf or leaf. Can it be color? No, because they can be both green. Can it be weight? No, because they can be both uh, four ounces. So there is one specific uh, feature that separates two uh, classes, which is the shape. You see, apples can only be round and bananas can only be curved. So they are. So our model should give the most importance to the feature that provides the best uh, gain. Okay, we will see that. We will see what I mean here. So this is the training set and this is the test set and the result we ask the classifier. You see red round apple, no leaf apple. And uh, yellow curved, no leaf banana and such. Okay, this is important. Uh, learn this. Learning is about generalizing from the training data. What does this assume about the training and test set? Past predicts future. With the past as a training data, we predict the future, which is the test, the data that it didn't see. Training data and test data. In this case, it would fail. Why? Uh, no, it would work. It may work, actually. Why? Because in the training data, there is no yellow apples. However, if our model is good and it builds, it constructs its model uh, with giving most importance to the shape. Since this shape is matching as an apple, it should predict these as apples and these as bananas, even though the colors are different, because color is not an important factor to determine whether it is apple or banana, because they can be both same colors. However, in this case, it would uh, predict all the uh, lemon as apples. Why? Because it didn't learn lemon in the training data. It doesn't know a class as a lemon. And it would match them to the closest one. And due to their shape, the closest one is apple. So it would output all these lemons as an apple. More technically, we are going to use the probabilistic model of learning. There is some probability distribution over example label pairs called the data generating distribution. Both the training data and the test set are generated based on this distribution. What is a probability distribution? Describes how likely, i.e. probable, certain events are. So when we throw uh, dual dices, these are the probabilities that they can uh, get on the floor. Okay. This is the probability distribution. High probability round apples and low probability curved apples because there is no curved apple. High probability curved Curved bananas, low probability red bananas because there is no 
curved uh, there is no uh, red banana or uh, round banana apples with leaves high probability yellow apples low probability because you see there are lower number of yellow apples actually there is no yellow apple this is the uh, Dutch generation distribution so when you are providing data for training data as a training data you should try to equally give a cool amount of uh, data for each class it would balance your training data having a cool number of each uh, classes data for each class You see, if you provide this as a training data and if we use this as a test data, it is not a good data generation gener generation distribution because we didn't provide any yellow apples in the training data. So our model never found a yellow apple. However, we wanted to classify a yellow apple, but it has no idea previously. And For this case, uh, when we are uh, building our model, we are providing many bananas and lesser apples. However, when we are testing, we are providing many apples and lesser bananas. In the uh, training case, to improve test, uh, this wouldn't work very, very bad. Very well, because they are not equally balanced. To ride or not to ride, that is the question. Okay, so we are going to start uh, learning about decision tree algorithm. Okay. Okay, let's read from Wikipedia. Decision trees are very popular algorithms. Uh, they are easy to learn. They are easy to analyze. They are uh, pretty correct if your data set is uh, appropriate for decision tree algorithm. A decision tree is a decision support tool that uses a tree-like model of decisions and their possible consequences, including chance event outcomes, resource costs, and utility. It is one way to display an algorithm that only contains conditional control statements. Decision trees are commonly used in operations research, specifically in decision analysis, to help identify a strategy most likely to reach a goal, but are also a popular tool in machine learning. So you see this is an important part only contains conditional control statements okay so it, it must have conditional control statements like 30 percent here or like some uh, real value A decision tree is a flowchart-like structure in which each internal node represents a test on an attribute e.g. whether a coin flip comes up heads or tails, each branch represents the outcome of the test, and each leaf node represents a class label decision taken after computing all attributes. The paths from root to leaf represent classification rules. Okay, for example here, it checks it, it first checks uh, whether it is one or two, then it checks if true it branches more, and if it is false, it is uh, zero percent, zero dollar, 
touch. Okay, this is perhaps better case. Proceed or settle. If offer is uh, if you settle, you get uh, let's see if this is the example. Oh, they didn't they didn't provide a good examples. I will provide better example than uh, Wikipedia. Okay, let's continue. So. Here, what kind of decision tree we can build? What are the decisions? Okay, so we have three attributes, three features, which is the terrain, the type of the terrain, okay, and the type of the uh, unicycle, the bicycle we have, let's say, the weather status, and upon examination of these three features, we decide whether we should go for a ride with our bicycle or not. Okay. As you can see, they are all uh, control statements. They have a finite number of choices. And we can, based it on this data, we can build a decision tree. Okay. Recursive approach. Base case. Base case, if all data belong to the same class, create a leaf node with that label. So the leaf node determines the label. What is the label? Label is the class of outcome. Okay. So if all data belongs to the same class, we, pro we construct a label and a leaf node with the label. Otherwise, Otherwise, calculate the score for each feature if we used it to split the data, pick the feature with the highest score, partition the data based on that data value and call recursively. So this is how the algorithm works. Partitioning the data and when we go step by step you will understand better. So we start checking the first three of the uh, features. If we choose terrain, there is two uh, uh, available uh, paths, if we choose road as a terrain, if we choose terrain as the primary uh, separator, there are four yes and one no, uh, one no, if we choose trail, there are two yes and three no, if we choose unicycle, if it is yes, there are four yes and zero no, and if it is normal, there are two yes and four no, if we choose weather, there are, if it is rainy, there are two yes, one no. Uh, if snowy, two yes, two no. If sunny, two yes and one no. So when you look at these three features, which one of them is the, is the best one, the best one to predict the outcome? Okay. So in case of terrain, uh, we have 4 over 5 on the left side, we have uh, 3 over 5 on the right side. If we choose uni unicycle, we have 4 over 4, 4 on the left side, we have 4 over 6 on the right side. And same applies to this. So we, cal we will calculate score for each feature we, if we use it to split the data. This is important. Calculate the score for each feature if we used it to split the data. We have to split the data because none of them perfectly reaches to the answer. What score should we use? If we just stopped here, which tree would be best? How could we make these into decision trees? Okay, we will see that. How could we make these into decision trees? So the higher uh, number of correct one gets the class, uh, gets the, as the correct class. So four yes is the higher number here. So the row, if you if you choose the road, it means that the road path belongs to the yes class. You know there were two classes. Go for a ride. What were the classes? 
It was no and yes. There are two outcome classes. So, if we choose terrain, uh, it, it belongs to the yes class with 4 over 5. If we choose trail from the terrain feature, it has uh, 3 no and 2 yes, so it is no class with 3 over 5. If we choose unicycle feature and if the input data is mountain, it is yes with 4 cases. So it is perfectly finding the correct answer. And if it is normal bicycle, it is 2 yes and 4 no. So it is 4 over 6. And the rest is the same way. So we will calculate the score of each feature. Training error. The average error over the training set. For classification, the most common error is the number of mistakes. So what are the training errors? Training error for each of these. What would be the training error for each of these? For road, it would be 1 over 5, so 20% training error. For trail, it would be 2 over 5, so 40% training error. For mountain, it would be 0, 0 error. For normal, it would be 2 over 6 error, so about 16% or 17. For rainy, it would be 1 over 3, 33%. For snowy, it would be 2 over 4, so it would be 50%. For sunny, it would be... 1 over 3, it would be 33%. So yes, but however, it, uh, it uh, averages the error. So for terrain feature, it is what are the correct number, uh, what are the correct uh, answer count? 4 over 3, so it is 7 correct, 3 error. For unicycle, it is uh, four, uh, 8 correct and 2 uh, false answers, so it is 2 over 10, for whether it is 4 over 10. So the average error, uh, the least one is unicycle. So we start splitting our tree with unicycle, if it is mountain it splits to that, if it is normal it splits to that. You see, uh, the training error of mountain is zero, so we don't need to split it anymore. We reached the, we reached the correct answer if our bicycle is mountain. We always go to the right. However, if our bicycle is normal type, we are still not perfectly sure which would be the outcome. Outcome can be either yes or outcome can be either no, depending on the terrain and the weather. So if our bicycle type is mountain, it, it doesn't change based on the terrain or weather. It is always go for a ride. It doesn't matter. So we reach the correct answer if our unicycle is mountain type. However, if it is normal type, it depends on the terrain and the weather. If the terrain is trail and the weather is rainy, we go for a ride? No. If the terrain is road and the weather is sunny, we go for a ride? Yes. If the terrain is trail and the weather is snowy, we go for a ride? No. So, we need to split the tree into the uh, further and we need to make our error rate to zero. We, we should be able to find the correct answer always. How do we know the correct answer? You see, this is labeled data, so this is supervised learning, and for each case, we know the answer here. So we, we want to build a model that will provide us 100% correctness for the training data with least amount of overtraining. Okay. So we con this time we continue calculate errors uh, of these three branch. Okay. We use recurs and it was a recursive algorithm. This time we have two features to check. We don't check mountain anymore because we don't have to split it anymore. Okay. So there is unicycle and terrain. The error rate of unicycle is 
Oh, no unicycle anymore because it is. Uh, sorry about that. No mountain anymore because it is perfectly. And we continue uh, with splitting the normal type. So there is terrain and weather. So uh, the terrain has one over six error rate because. You know the highest number of votes gets that class, so the error rate of road is two over uh, one over three, and error rate of trail is zero. So average error rate is uh, one one no because this is not correct class. This is the correct class in road case. One over six, and for weather, it is two over six. So terrain score is better. It produces lesser error rate. Error rate. So our uh, tree is shaping like this. Mountain yes, no, no further speed because we get the hundred percent correctness, and then normal normal gets to the terrain. If road it is like this, and if if it is trail, we get hundred score. So we will split data one more time from the road selection. And since there is no more uh, feature left, it gets like this. So for each case, uh, we have correctly uh, uh, we have correctly uh, determined R plus except one because this is hundred percent, this is hundred percent, this is hundred percent, this is also hundred percent, but this is 50-50, so the accuracy is uh, very high, but not 100%. Okay. Building decision trees base case, if all data belong to the same class, create a leaf node with that label. So in here, all data belongs to the class yes class. So this is a leaf node with a label label is yes it goes here it all data belongs to a class no so we split it goes here all the all data belongs to class no yeah no so we create a label here if it is unicycle if it is terrain if it is normal cycle and bicycle and if it is trail road the answer the class is no However, if it is normal bicycle, if it is road, uh, terrain type is road, and if it is, uh, then we check the weather. If it is rainy, the class is yes. If it is snowy, the class is no. If it is sunny, the class is yes. Okay, let's read this again. Otherwise, calculate the score for each feature if we used it to split the data, pick the feature with the highest score, partition the data based on that data value and call recursively. So we, what, the, what we do is partitioning the data and calculate the score and then we build our tree. So training error in here, this and accuracy, this, this and this and this. Training error is 1 minus accuracy or vice versa. Training error equals 1 accuracy and vice versa. Training error, the average error over the training set. Training accuracy, the average percent correct over the training set. And we do recurse. Okay. Are we always guaranteed to get a training error of zero? No. No, we are not always guaranteed because you see. There are two cases with same data and they produce different outputs. So this is a problematic data. 
each unique case should have only single class. However, we have a unique case combination of three features and they are output different classes. So when can this happen? This can happen when we have problematic data. So we decide ourselves a class and in our approach, we decided if it is uh, normal, road and rain, we go to yes. So if this data counts, road, mountain, snowy, I mean, no, uh, the erroneous case was The error nose case was this one. Uh, so if it's come to normal road and rainy, we decide either yes or no. We decided yes, so we have a, a data error. Maybe we can. Uh, cut the tree before going into further branches and it would be it could be perhaps unicycle if unicycle mountain yes and if it is normal no what would be our accuracy in this case for this uh, training table if it is normal we go four times no and one time yes and if it is the uh, mountain, it's always correct. So we have one incorrect answer here and uh, eight correct answers. So our error rate will be one over nine if we cut the data like here. Okay. So if what what would happen if our uh, data were like this? Terrain, unicycle type, weather, jacket, ML grade, go for a ride. What would our tree look like in this case? I would like you to think about this for a moment. So we want our uh, models to be always as much as possibly general. However, there are there is an ML grade which uh, defines every class perfectly correctly. Would we want that in our model? Would you like? Would we want that ML grade to be in our model? No. Let's say we are building a uh, student identifier decision tree. Uh, if I put my uh, student ID into my model, I can always 100% uh, define my. Uh, I can always 100% correctly determine the. Um, objects in the training data with the student ID. However, it would construct me a model that cannot be generalized. generalized. In, this, in this case, it will build a tree like this. It will take into the consideration ML grade and no further branching. So if, if comes a new data, that doesn't have ML grade, one of these, it couldn't correctly uh, determine it. It couldn't correctly guess the, cor uh, guess the correct class. Because it would be 100% uh, dependent on the ML grade and no other data, no general data. Okay, why? Because if it is 100% correctly uh, 
classifying the uh, data with a future, it doesn't branch anymore. Okay. So it would, it, the overfitting would occur. Overfitting occurs when we bias our model too much towards the training data. In this case, we would bias our training data 100% to ML grade and it would be overfitting. No generalization. Our goal is to learn a general model that will work on the training data as well as other data, i.e. test data. Our decision tree learning procedure always decreases training error. Is that what we want? Is that what we want? Truly, this is the question. We can 100% correctly uh, classify the training data. However, if the test, uh, if the future data, if the unseen examples accuracy is 50%, it is not good. Let's say our training data accuracy is 80% and our test data accuracy is 80%. This is a better model for us. Because in machine learning, our aim is to predict the future data correctly, not the past data. We already know the past data. We already know the past data. We already know our uh, existing uh, uh, variables classes. What we want is predicting the unseen data, predicting the future. So we don't want overfitting. Machine learning is about predicting the future based on the past. Okay, so future testing data model predict. So we should check for the test data accuracy as well. And when they are both, when the sum of them is highest, we may cut the decision tree uh, constructing. So let's say it is maximum at like uh, when the size of the tree number of nodes is 20. So we cut the tree construction at the number of not 20 and we don't uh, continue to construct the tree. Okay, so the cutting point is totally up to the uh, user itself. There is no one single rule. So based on your uh, necessities and needs, you cut the, uh, you cut the uh, training. This is also a whole area of profession. This is also a whole area of research. Even though the training error is decreasing, the testing error can go up. Yes, this is important. What we want is not 100% training rate. What we want is the highest possible test accuracy, highest possible generalization of a model, so we can predict the future correctly. So how do we prevent overfitting? Base case, if all data belong to the same class, create a leaf node with that label OR all the data has the same feature values OR. We can stop uh, constructing the tree when we've reached a particular depth in the tree or other methods. What could they be? One idea, stop building the tree early. And what, what other ideas there are? We've reached a particular depth in the tree. We only have a certain number, fraction of examples remaining. We've reached a particular training error. Use development data. More on this later. We can alternatively do pruning. Pruning. After the tree is built, go back and prune the tree, i.e. remove some lower parts of the tree. Similar to stopping early, but done after the entire tree is built. So pruning is another option. After we build the entire tree till to the end, we can go back and see the uh, unseen data accuracy of on the tree. 
how can we have unseen data so we split our training data into the pieces let's say we have 100 labeled data we use 90 of them as training set and 10 of them as test set so we never show these 10 pieces of test set to the training uh, when we are building our model so three uh, so our model doesn't have any idea of this test set however we know the labels of this test set so based on the accuracy of this test set we can do pruning later so we can cut the tree based on uh, the test data accuracy and prevent uh, overfitting pruning create criterion is totally depending on you and what about handling non-binary non attributes on uh, handling non-binary attributes so let's say our data is like this how can we build a decision tree with a data like this they are not binary they are not true or false or two classes or uh, separatable classes what do we do with uh, features like this? What do we do with features that have multiple values? Real values? What can you do? Okay. I want you to think about this for a moment. Okay, so what can we do is split these real value data into the ranges and compose therefore classes. We can do that. Uh, treat as an array split, treat as multiple binary splits. Okay, so for example, we can say that if it is above for the uh, ticket price if it is above 100,000 we can say plus one uh, or we can make them as data one or if it is uh, below if it is above 100,000 we can say data two so we can split them into the n arrays or binary it is up to us you which for real valued features use any comparison test greater than less than is less than or equal to is greater than or equal to to split the data into two parts select a range filter i.e. min less than value less than max so you see we split data as binary with this or we split data as this it is totally up to you. So, decision tree would work on real value data as well. Other splitting criterion. Otherwise, calculate the score for each feature if we used it to split the data, pick the feature with the highest score, partition the data based on that data value and call recursively. We used training error for the score. Any other ideas? Other splitting criterion. Okay, so, so this is actually the true criterion used for splitting entropy how much uncertainty there is in the distribution over labels after the split Gini sum of the square of the label proportions after split training error equals misclassification error so good or bad so uh, this is actually 
the uh, used algorithm for splitting criterion, entropy and gain, uh, not just the basic score we have seen, it's a, it is more about the uncertain, uncertainty left. Uh, so what are good of the decision tree algorithm? Because you know there are multiple algorithms. Very intuitive and easy to interpret. Fast to run and fairly easy to implement. Historically, perform fairly well, especially with a few more tricks we'll see later on. No prior assumptions about the data. So these are the good attributes of a uh, decision tree algorithm. What are the bad tree? Uh, bad features. Decision tree. Be careful with features with lots of values. Okay, what are the other bad attributes? Can be problematic, slow, bad performance, with large numbers of features can't learn some very simple data sets, e.g. some types of linearly separable data, pruning, tuning can be tricky to get right. But if your data set has thousands of features, we will see what kind of data can have thousands of features. This is really bad. Okay. Or let's say you have real valued data and each data actually means something. So splitting them into the ranges is bad. Decision tree would perform uh, poorly. Okay. So how many feature you have is a key point for using decision trees. Okay. And the final DT decision tree algorithm. Uh, this is the final algorithm. I mean the uh, finalized algorithm. Base cases. 1. If all data belong to the same class, pick that label 2. If all the data have the same feature values, pick majority label 3. If we're out of features to examine, pick majority label 4. If the we don't have any data left, pick majority label of parent 5. If some other stopping criteria exists to avoid overfitting, pick majority label. So if all class, if all data belongs to the same class, we pick that label. If otherwise, we pick the majority label. In, uh, in the example, we always pick, pick it the majority label. For example, in trail, the majority label is no, so this is majority label. Uh, in road, the majority label is yes, so we pick the majority label yes as the class result of road. Okay. So alternative score calculation information game. We, we have seen the basic score calculation. However, the most common, the most used uh, score calculation is actually called as information gain. Alternative score calculation, information gain. Okay, so. Why information gain is better over accuracy? Decision trees are generally prone to overfitting and accuracy doesn't generalize well to unseen data. Okay. One advantage of information gain is that, due to the factor minus p log p, in the entropy definition, leafs with a small number of instances are assigned less weight, limp right pointing arrow 0 plus p log p equals 0, and it favors dividing data into bigger but homogeneous groups. This approach is usually more stable and also chooses the most impactful features close to the root of the tree. So this is a really important one. Okay, decision tree classification. Okay. What was the source of this page? Okay, this one, I'm opening it. So we can see from here. 
this source uh, explains pretty good uh, the information gain algorithm however i hope it is working okay it is working very good okay so position three classification let's read it Decision tree builds classification or regression models in the form of a tree structure. It breaks down a data set into smaller and smaller subsets while at the same time an associated decision tree is incrementally developed. The final result is a tree with decision nodes and leaf nodes. A decision node e Outlook, has two or more branches e.g., sunny, overcast and rainy. Leaf node e play, represents a classification or decision. The topmost decision node in a tree which corresponds to the best predictor called root node. Decision trees can handle both categorical and numerical data. Okay, so here we are going to have famous uh, example data. There are predictors, features, and there is target, the class. So we have uh, features as Outlook temperature, humidity, and windy. So if the outlook is rainy, the weather, or it can be rainy, it can be overcast, or it can be sunny, okay, uh, the temperature can be hot, mild, cool, humidity can be high, normal, windy can be false or true, and do we play golf based on this data? So the decision tree would be sunny, overcast rainy windy yes so if the overcast is yes uh, i mean the outlook is overcast always yes if the outlook is sunny then we check the windy if the windy is false the class is yes if the, the output is yes if the wind is true the output is no and so if the outlook is uh, rainy we check the humidity and if the humidity is high the answer is no, the humidity is normal, the answer is yes. So the algorithm. The core algorithm for building decision trees called ID3 by J.R. Quinlan which employs a top-down, greedy search through the space of possible branches with no backtracking. ID3 uses entropy and information gain to construct a decision tree. In 0R model there is no predictor, in 1R model we try to find the single best predictor, naive Bayesian includes all predictors using Bayes rule and the independence assumptions between predictors but decision tree includes all predictors with the dependence assumptions between predictors. So ID3 is the name of the decision tree information gain algorithm, the most popular one. So what is entropy? Entropy a decision tree is built top-down from a root node and involves partitioning the data into subsets that contain instances with similar values, homogeneous. ID3 algorithm uses entropy to calculate the homogeneity of a sample. If the sample is completely homogeneous the entropy is zero and if the sample is an equally divided it has entropy of one. Okay, you see the entropy. So, what does this mean? Okay, so if the entropy is very high, that means it is all belongs to the same classes. Okay. I mean, if it separates completely, not uh, not the one I said. To build a decision tree, we need to calculate two types of entropy using frequency tables as follow. Entropy using the frequency table of one attribute. So this is the formula of the entropy. So for each attribute, we calculate the entropy. First one is play golf. For play golf class, what is the entropy? It has two uh, output. It can be yes or no. So the entropy is entropy five over nine. It calculates five is zero point thirty six and zero point fifty four. So 
it calculates here with this formula. Okay, one sec. Okay, so this is so simple. This means that we sum, sum all of the uh, values of the features. So in this case, we have two features, yes and no, and we will calculate the sum of them. All right. I will write a simple application to uh I'll clear some of that or we can even uh compose. I'm going to write a uh, console application. It dot uh, net core. Okay. All right. So we can take as an input uh, the values. Cool. Okay. And I will hold the values inside a couple. This stuff will be in pink. Or make it let's double. Easier calculation. So I will uh, set the input with uh, this one.
and I will compose a new tuple as like this. I could write this in a fever line, but, but I want you to uh, understand it easily, easily. Second parameter. So let's try how it works. Okay, let's say I will enter this one. Uh, three, two, three, two, four, zero, four, zero, this, and two, three, two, three. When I enter, Let's see our values. You see three two four zero two three. Okay. So we will calculate entropy of these files. It will be sum of all of them. I'm going to write a entropy calculator. I will double calculate entropy. It will take a tuple. It is. Okay. Okay, and so calculation is so easy. How it is? It is done uh, like this. So it will be plus this negative sign is here. Uh, equal to. Uh, Probability E. How do we calculate probability E? Uh, we calculate probability E as we get the first uh, first bigger number. Oh, we get the both of them, so it is fine. So uh, it will be like this. And then I will make a, a final entropy. Zero. And then I will iterate. Uh, these numbers. Oh, by the way, this will be like this since this is a list. Or not this, it will be for count. Uh, so, uh, Oh, for each pedal, for each pedal, yeah. Uh, the probability of the current number will be equal to current number over uh, sum. Okay. So, entropy. Uh, 
equal to will be equal to C1 multiply probability multiply uh, mark log two like it like this and this okay i can type this to the screen so you would understand or uh, type yeah let's type it to the screen and how can we type it Or, or let's go to the next line. And control right line uh, probability calculate and copy over of average. But mat probability, mat lock. So, so. And it could to this one. So we will see each number and drop it with two position. Okay. And what I am going to do is uh, calculate the final probability uh, like this. I mean final entropy equal to Eastern current entropy also. Okay. So we will return the final entropy. And is this enough? No, not yet. Uh, I need to uh, calculate final entropy of all variables to find the. Uh, I think it is average. No, it is just some summarization of final entropy. Zero and for each list values uh, equal to and I will call this function method fix uh, couple 
I will type the console. Okay, I need to make this static so that's Okay, now I can calculate uh, the final entropy. Okay, I'm typing. Uh, I will upload this uh, code to the, our GitHub page, so don't worry about that. So let's calculate this. 9 and 5. How I'm going to type it? I'm going to type it as like this. Okay, current number is 9. All number in this list is 9 and 5. Entropy calculation. Minus one uh, multiply probability, which is uh, 0 0.64. Uh, multiply mod log probability, which is uh, negative uh, 0 0.64, and it is uh, 0 0.41. Okay, let's see if it is correct. And then it calculates another one, and uh, which is uh, 0 0.53. And when they are summarized, it is. Uh, 0 0.94 and yes as you can see we have far, uh, successfully con uh, calculated the entropy of play golf which has two features yes and no okay so uh, let's calculate the more uh, advanced one which is this one in this case outlook and play golf so I will type the, uh, this one to calculate. Uh, 3, 2, uh, 4, 0, and 2, 3. When I type it, I can see every one of the entropies and the final will be Okay, it is uh, currently none. Why is that? Because the entropy of 40 is uh, negative permanent. However, it should have been calculated as zero. So, uh, how am I going to do that? So if the uh, logarithmic of probability, okay, the probability of uh, zero is calculated as negative uh, infinite. So okay, what I need to do is a probability cannot be lower than zero so if uh, zero i will set it to zero it should fix it okay i'm going to run it again and three two three two and four zero and two three Sorry, I have entered incorrectly. Uh, I need to type again. Port. Okay, I'm going to type it. Copy this. Paste it. Run. Okay, okay, we have another error, yes. I think I will make this like that. Yeah, now we should for feathers.
Okay, so current final entropy is 1.94. So we have an error somewhere. Yeah, we have to uh, multiply them with their probability. So probability sunny is uh, 5 over 14y because sunny has 5 uh, as a total probability. Uh, uh, number of output you see 3 plus 2 and orchestra is 4 plus 0 so I am going to add that to the um, this uh, how I am going to do that I am going to do that as equal to um, I will show you some uh, link here. And it will be good. So. Over uh, select and from this select, I need to make a sum. Yes, and let's check it out. For example, the first one will have. 5 over 14 probability if it is correct. Oh. Okay, yes, 5 over 14 is roughly about this. Yeah, correct. And uh, I count, I will, uh, this like that. Okay, so it should be same as the final output. And I type it. Yeah, you see 0 0.69. Okay. Since I show with uh, two precision, uh, the last one was not shown. I'm going to make this three precision. It is just um, visual. Okay, okay, it's just uh, the blurring difference, rounding difference. Okay, so we now know the entropy. So what, how the information is gain is calculated? The information gain is based on the decrease in entropy after a data set is split on an attribute. Let's read from here. Uh, where was the website link? It was here. Let me open it again. Okay. Okay, information gain. Information gain. The information gain is based on the decrease in entropy after a data set is split on an attribute. Constructing a decision tree is all about finding attribute that returns the highest information gain, i.e., the most homogeneous branches. Oh. Uh, this is the our first entropy, and when we split our tree with outlook data, uh, the entropy gain is uh, and the entropy gain is the decrease of the entropy. For outlook, it is zero point. Uh, uh, 247 why because if you sub substitute uh, from 0 0.94 to 0 0.693 it is equal to this one so play golf has this much gain uh, I mean uh, temperature has this much gain outlook has this much gain and humidity has this much gain and windy has this much gain. So 
which one has the most gain, the outlook. So we choose outlook as our first attribute split. And after that, we continue to calculate uh, information gain for the rest. Okay. So after this choose, our entropy become uh, this new value. Oh, no, no, I mean this is the gain. Uh, the entropy become uh, okay. The entropy become uh, this after choosing the outlook uh, zero point uh, six hundred ninety three, and then we continue. To choose our next one okay so the next next one will be probably uh, humidity and the next one will be windy and then the temperature probably so we repeat the same process on every branch after we choose the outlook uh, this is how it becomes. So we calculate the rest. Okay. So for temperature, then what remains is mild, high, cool. Uh, I mean mild, cool, hot. So for this we calculate, and for the humidity we calculate, and then we find the. Uh, Best. So from outlook uh, for sunny, we calculate for each of these attributes the wind gets the wind. For rainy, we don't need to. Uh, uh, for rainy, the humidity gets best. So for each attribute, you calculate the gain, and from there, we choose it. Okay. Okay, at the next lesson, I will repeat here and uh, I will uh, proceed with the, uh, with the uh, remaining values so you will get a better idea of this one. And uh, you will understand how it is calculated or maybe we can Okay, yes. Yes, I will leave this to the next week uh, so we can repeat and understand better. Okay. You can also try to understand the remaining part, but you should already have understood it, how it is working, how decision trees are built. Uh, with spending enough time, you can code your own decision tree algorithm. I mean, I, software, it is easy. Let me upload what we have done so far to the, uh, our GitHub repository. Okay.
Okay, everything is uploaded to the GitHub repository. Let's open our GitHub repository. I will open from our YouTube page. We have a link there as well. Okay. This is our YouTube channel name. Oh, please uh, subscribe and open uh, the notification. And from there, I will find our first lesson it is here and from here our github is linked there and you see the source code entropy calculator has arrived and the latest slides are also has arrived Okay, uh, hopefully see you later and stay safe from coronavirus, be careful. Alright, end of the lecture.